Hey everyone, welcome to this new channel, this new venture, this new dream that we're about to start. My name is Dal Dravile and I'm really so grateful for all of you joining us for this, I dare say, introductory, I wouldn't say first because we're probably going to release that a bit later, but introductory episode to a new passion project that we're going to be starting over here. And I say we because I am not alone. I'm here with my color coordinated co host. Dark Men United? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's, it's not Dark Men United. It's the Dark Men's only here. I don't know. Dark only here. I, I, don't know. I, I don't know about you, you, you young milk chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're like 60% cocoa. I think dark, dark chocolate starts like 75 no, dark, plus. It's, 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 the it's, it's, it's the light. It's the light. It's the light. The, the, the real right. me looks different, guys. It's, it's light. <laughs> <laughs> but sir, please uh, introduce yourself to... Well, we already know who you are, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, because we just met, right? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I hope no one laughs at that weak joke. Uh, <laughs> 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 Actually, I need to take some water. It's all so dry. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> please introduce yourself to our audience. Hi, guys. Um, oh, I need to look at the camera because Pretty Boys United. Um, hi, guys. Uh, I'm Tulani. Uh, I'm Tulani Damuza. I am actually, I was going to say three, then I realized that there's more than this, just three of us. Um, I'm Tulani, and I welcome you to our new channel. Um, and I'm going to flip it to the guy that might give me blood one day if I decide to have something. Uh, uh, probably <laughs> something. not. Something? <laughs> what something, sir? I, I, well, hey, man, there's only, like, how many? Oh, no, there's, like, five of us. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that, you know, oh. niggas aren't stingy with their kidneys. Wow. <laughs> you did not do that. You actually did not do that. Oh, no, it's a, no, it's a serious chat. Th that's why I try to always make you guys happy. You so, in case you need an organ or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think one thing that we can clear and to our audience is that Tulani clearly has quite a reckless uh, <laughs> lifestyle that he is indulging in. You know, he has a over, he's like Brent Fayaz. Uh, he relates to him because he has an overindulgent personality. No, I genuinely do. And an addictive one. Well, that's. That's something that like, clearly came through <laughs> a line. <laughs> it's, it's generic. No, I'm serious. Like, like I think, like I was telling him, but like, like that's how I brought it up. Like, I wanted to try something, right? And I realized, no, man, this is not what we do over here, um, because things end badly. So we don't, <laughs> we don't try any substance. Sure. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, who are you, sir? Sure, uh, Solid Tulani. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I am Ludwe, and uh, as Daryl said, welcome to the channel. Um, we decided to call it School Fees. You know, I think it's a fitting term, uh, given that we'll be talking about uh, business lessons, um, just in general tech, and uh, just solid discussions. And yeah, man, uh, perhaps we could kick it off by asking Daryl, what does school fees mean to him? So I think you definitely touched on the first part about school fees is in us starting this new passion project. Mm. Um, so obviously, we're going to be indulging in business and in particular wait, tech wait. space. Um, first, OK, we first need to establish in, in business, what does the term school fees mean? Um, because for the average person, they might not really know, like when they say school fees, they thinking solely like yo monetary like mo monetary terms so basically. what does school fees mean in the actual business term world and how yeah what does it actually mean in that sense look i think uh it effectively alludes to the lessons that you would have learned or mistakes right so let's say you come up with a new product and you target this particular market and you find that perhaps it doesn't work out right or you burn a lot of cash in marketing and you find you're not hitting the KPIs you meant to, mm. right? And then you decide to pivot into something else. And in effect, that price that you would have paid, be it uh, uh, sweat equity, the, the actual monetary amount that you would have paid, the time, that would, I guess, constitute as school fees. And the idea would be then to learn or take a lot of lessons from that, such that when you then decide to pivot into a different direction, you have a bit more insight, right? So that's my understanding within the business context as to what school fees actually is. 
No, I not think that's that's quite a good explanation. I look, think. Look, look, look at you, you, look at you killing him. Like my man is like starstruck. He's like yo, he's like yo, this guy just had such a great explanation. <laughs> <laughs> like this is him. Like, <gasps> <You're clowning. laughs> no, I could clown. tell. Like my man likes explaining. So the fact that he literally was speechless should say a lot. So big up. Man. <laughs> 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 Oh wow, guys, you being serious? <laughs> <laughs> no, like this is him. It's like Th- this should definitely be Clowns United. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, so so with that specifically said, like the the pun slash metaphor allegory, right, is that like when you go to school, there's some lessons that you learn. Mm. Um, is that the do, do I call it opportunity cost? Like when you pay school fees, mm. like literal school fees in school is that you get an education out of it that mm. can't be taken away from you. Mm. Uh, experience, yes. Yeah, do you get what I mean? Yeah. An experience, like like if, like if looking at our, like we always talk about our varsity experience, which mm. is not educational based. Um, like in my case, I learned more about EQ than anything else. I learned how to actually communicate with these people. But like, and you, like why, why did you think that the specific podcast was important in the landscape that we find ourselves in? Well, it's a double-edged sword with me. I think the first part, I definitely agree with you, Ludwig, about how when it comes to business or any ventures that you may have in that space, there's an obvious price you pay to reach where it is that you want to go. Mm. Um, like you said, sweat equity, lessons learned and all that. I think on the other hand, it's also what my intention is for this project that we're going to be launching, I mm. think, it will, will be really important for us to ensure that it's obviously educationally based in the sense that we're providing value to mm. our audience. But also, I won't lie, I don't know everything. Uh, I don't think... Yeah, I, no, not. no, it's talk much. And so, you know... <laughs> <laughs> also, so, clearly, so clearly, you've overindulged uh, in uh, the dark arts and you've overindulged <laughs> in dog. business education Wait, as well. dog, I speak to you every day. You should know by now. Oh, I'm a walking me, Google. You send me like, <laughs> you send me like 20 Both YouTube dead. videos a day. I still have videos from last year, October, which I haven't watched yet. That I should tell which you. Which you've sent me. I have all this here. In anyway, continue. <laughs> oh, you have a lot of free time. Hey, man. It is what it is. It is. <laughs> um, don't tell my employer this. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> can see you. Yeah. Well, your boss will probably watch this <laughs> one day. So. Yeah, I don't have a lot of free time. Don't send the link to your colleagues. <laughs> this this may not end well. <laughs> on WhatsApp, on on when I'm posting it on, as my status, eliminate anyone that works for <laughs> me. Sure, like, like, even like in, in almost older people, right? Yeah. Like, because we all work for our like, corporates. Like, older people now are like busy chilling with like their families. You know, they're going to be looking at this like, these niggas, like, they have a lot of time. Like, how are they? Yeah, are I'm they? not giving them enough work. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, your boss is like, no, this guy needs more work. Yeah. Like, you can't even be complaining about tasks. I'm um, sorry. You can't even be complaining about, like, uh, tasks that you're doing. Because mm. you'd be like, no, I don't have enough time. They'd be like, yeah, you're out here doing YouTube channels. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, um, yeah, so, I disrupted yeah, so, so on the one hand, um, it's also for me from a personal perspective, mm. I think probably for all of us to all grow and for us to have our own way of paying school fees through us dedicating time to this channel. Obviously, at future points, we'll be having guests on to interview them and Absolutely. we'll be debating different topics. And this is a great way for us to enhance our understanding of the finance and business world and the tech space Mm -hmm. and also for us to get value. Because I think, you know, when we talk about school fees, one of the things that's really important with it is that you're obviously investing um, money to pay Mm -hmm. the people educating you and time, but you get something in return. Like you say, you get an education in return, which you can use and no one can take away from you. And so to everyone in our audience and also for us, Mm. that's quite an important thing in my opinion that after each episode or after each few episodes, we at least leave us something which we can implement Mm. into the world and we can get some sort of an ROI from it. So so, um, definitely I think, uh, I guess, lessons that we can apply ourselves Mm. is is a major one. But I also think uh, problem solving, right? Mm. Because I I, I would imagine in in business, every encounter you have is a problem that you need to overcome. And I suppose learning about like how other people have done it in the past um, uh, is a very important 
thing to to understand because um, you may not have thought of a certain perspective. You may not have thought of, um, okay, cool, if I do this, then this is the implied consequence, right? I think that's a major thing that we'd also like to in discover or at least uh, show, right? Um, yeah, so... Mm. Yeah. And I think the second part of my double edged sword is that I'm sure we've probably all seen on Instagram <laughs> or Twitter, if you are on Twitter, WhatsApp, everyone always complaining about how, you know, what did we pay school fees for? And we should have learned <laughs> this, this and that in school. Yeah. And I do think so. I think that there are certain gaps which we have had, mm. which haven't been filled from what we learned in school. For sure. example, most people don't even know how to fill out a tax return. Mm. And <laughs> wait, you don't have to these days. Well, true. I don't get paid enough to have to now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you, but you don't have to fill it out. Like it's automated. But like in your yeah. um, working environment, you probably have to because you have to clock in overtime and stuff. But yeah. like in my case, where I don't pay overtime, like I really don't have to do like a tax like travel claims and yeah <laughs> so like, you know we'll get travel claims meal allowances yeah. over time so it, it gets a lot so small things like that um small things about insurance i mean we don't learn sure. about insurance in school i mean most people probably even read the insurance contracts or even read contracts in general um and just like general business principles and not even just business but finance principles personal finance and all that there's a lot of gaps which we left to school and i don't know if that is the job of our schools to teach us that in the first place should it be the job of our schools maybe we can have a deeper conversation about this at a later stage mm. but it's evident that there are gaps and so part of the school fees concept is also us filling in those gaps yeah. where school wasn't there for us and whatever we weren't able to pick up on. And I mean, maybe I can throw this in and people can get mad at me if they want to, but I have been doing a lot of thinking okay, around- Okay, bad boy, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm wearing my The <laughs> okay. Weeknd outfit. Okay. Uh, the old black, you know, I got ice on my neck. Thing. Pardon? I thought this was an everyday outfit. Oh, no, no, I, I'm, I am like The Weeknd every day, you know. Sure. Anyway, Tro continue. Troubled soul. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just- I think my beard should be glistening in the anyway. <laughs> but uh, in in a way, I'm sure so many people have complained about how, you know, has school even been worth it? Mm. Like I've spent all this time, all this uh, energy, I've studied, like I saw a tweet where someone is speaking about, and again, it's about GameStop, but we will obviously speak about this at a later mm. time as well, where someone tweeted like, to all the um, investors on Wall Street, you did the right thing. You studied the intelligent <laughs> investor by the age of 15. I think it's chapter seven, value investing. Um, you studied the whole thing. You went to Harvard. You got your MBA. You worked at Wall Street for a whole number of years. Oh, there's some Reddit gents. There's some Reddit, Reddit gents who, who eat, who eat, um, who eat noodles. <laughs> you know, eat two-minute noodles every day. <laughs> Spend the whole day was just posting fucking memes up your on <laughs> all your wealth <laughs> and 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 i think that in a way people can complain about it and say no they were lucky boy and whatever but it should make you ask the question they've put all that time and i mean those people also should probably still have student debt that they're looking to pay off mm. and you've put in all this time and energy into the school fees and what you got in return the roi that you got for that investment is it something that you can actually use going forward so I, I have a maybe slightly contrasting view. Um, maybe it's our idea of school fees, right? Or mm. school that needs to maybe be altered a bit, right? Uh, for instance, we are placing the responsibility to those institutions, right? To teach us everything, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we need to learn about, as you've mentioned, finance, how to do your taxes, uh, law, and, and all of that. Uh, maybe they are not equipped enough, mm. right? Because it's such a broad spectrum of things. Right, that it becomes very difficult for someone to have adequate knowledge in everything. Maybe then it should be a thing where, cool, they will teach us what they can, right? And we then, it's sort of like a collective responsibility. So for you to be able to be a sufficient and being able to function in the real world, you can't then solely rely on school. You um, have also have to, you know, take things into your own hands. But can and I rebut this? Is, yeah, I, I also have a massive rebuttal sure. to that. So, for example, like him and I went to like University of Pretoria and went to mm. UCT. Like, 
you got you paid probably 30k more than like nah, what it's we probably did. like double yeah <laughs> that's not getting it's like 30k for each letter you <laughs> <laughs> 30c 30t right. probably so, pay them 5k for the view that you get <laughs> and run the bush and run the bush another 10 for is it what is it the jammy stairs oh, where right. you know, for each yeah. step there but yeah. step, <laughs> each steps like 500 rand <laughs> no 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 so so the main point I'm bringing up the fees for that is that like tax return right mm. like for example when you get employed right like you just had a new employer and you had to go through this entire onboarding thing sure. no but fortunately you had work before so you had like thing so you had an idea of how it works but imagine a person who had just gotten out of varsity mm. um everything will be new um and like for example, I remember like reading, like remember like we had to do like some philosophy classes, right? Where that was quite fun, actually. It, it it was, but it was like it was still about around about thinking and stuff. Where there wasn't a class where I could say that was real life in terms of like when you work, this is what you'd have to do. Sure. Um, this is and for the amount of like it's I, it's for the amount of fees that you pay, mm. they should prepare you. Um. Sure. A, to at least have an idea of what to expect sure. when you come into the workplace. So look, um, I, I fully agree with that, right? Um, I do think that they are slowly realizing that, right? That there is a massive gap and that people are starting to question the value of it. Mm. But you also have to, I suppose, understand that these institutions have been around for a very long time, right? And I'm sure when they initially were started, they had not thought about all of these, you know, like with the, um, you know, w- new grads. I, I suppose, but maybe back in the day, people. I don't even think grads was was a thing. Yeah, the, yeah, <laughs> there was, there was no point. grad program going you know. into. <laughs> so I think, um, I think slowly but surely it will eventually get there. But at this moment, people are definitely questioning the value of that. And you know, compared to like online learning, where it's at a fraction of the cost and it's more applicable, you kind of have someone who has been there or who's currently doing the thing, like with Udemy or Coursera or any of those, teach you what you need to know, as opposed to like some professor who's teaching you a book that, or a textbook that was like 30, done 30, 100 years ago, right? Like it's literally the same thing, but nowhere applicable to the real world. So I do think it's conversations that need to be had, right? And slowly but surely, I don't know if they will, uh, I guess, adapt or evolve quick enough. I think one of the issues with the education systems while we're still on the topic of school fees Mm -hmm. is the speed at which decisions are made. The world is at a position now where it's moving so quickly that you can't have a six month period to approve a curriculum and then to teach it for another year. So technically a year and a half later, you've lost a lot of time. You've lost a lot of time. Two years have passed, all has passed, Mm -hmm. passed you by and your curriculum is already outdated. Um, so I think that that's a real hurdle which is in the in the face of universities. And I think maybe if a step were to be taken back, and I like what you said about there is a collective responsibility because maybe as a society, we need to ask the big question, what is the purpose of educational system? Should your education end when you graduate mm. or are we meant to be vessels of lifelong learning? Is the purpose of university education to equip you with basic skills Uh or are you meant out to come out a complete product? Is, and this would probably hit uh, a lot of people in the heart or strike a nerve, is the purpose of education to provide you with job opportunities Mm. or provide you with a skill? And if you choose to study something for which there isn't a market for, where that skill isn't in demand and as a result of that, you don't get a job, is it right for you to make that the burden of the university that you didn't equip me with a skill? That but why does the university job? even have that um, specific degree or diploma if they know that there's no market for it? It means that they just wasted three years of your life and and you just paid for nothing. Not quite, yeah. because again, <laughs> it's, because again, exactly. it's is the purpose of a university education to teach you a skill or to get you a job? Those are two different things. Or to train someone to do research. Yeah, or train someone to do research. And so now also as a society, because let's be real, and I think we know obviously all black here, uh, um, we know. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying. I, I looked in the mirror in today. Someone didn't know. 
<laughs> wow. Well, but these, pointing it out. No, yeah. but these days you can wake up and be like, I feel white today. Daryl, yeah. I demand you to refer to me <laughs> as a white person. And you wow. are obligated to mm-hmm. be like, yeah. You are a white person to lie to me. <laughs> but, um, so we obviously, I'm not going to go into the history of black people. Sure. I think most people are acquainted with that. If not, I, I don't know how. I don't know what I can say. Um, but men, in particular, black communities, many people in black communities, either first or second generation, to University. get an education, mm-hmm. um, in their families. Like I think I'm second generation. Um, but uh, a lot of my friends, a lot of, in particular when I was in Rez, a large portion of my friends were members of first generation to get uh, education. And the reason why they were pushed to go to university was, okay, you're going there to get something so you can get a job. It's why, like, I know sure. in many black communities, there's this joke going around that, you know, our parents only recognize, like, four degrees. It's like medicine, law, engineering. accounting, engineering. Yeah. And maybe Axi if they're a bit woke. Yeah. <laughs> anything else you're playing and games. Anything else, like you're, you're, you're playing games. But why is that? Yeah. Why is it that they recognize? Because they know that Security. if you study those degrees, you probably have the highest chance of getting a job. Sure. And so in many of those situations, you're sent to university not to get a skill. Mm. You're sent to university to get something which can give you a job. And so I think that maybe we also have to question, well, why are we even going to university? Mm. I mean, we know what the job market is like now. Well, especially, especially in South Africa. Africa. It's, a it's, it's a bit shaky. Add on the effect of COVID-19, mm. it's becoming even harder for you to be able to get a job and job opportunities even more scarce. Mm. So should we be going to university with the purpose of wanting to get a job after it? If even that one card which the university has had yeah. is slowly slipping away. I don't know what you guys think. So um, maybe to add on to, to what you're saying, mm. I also think just your ability to think, right? Because you find that, let's say, a couple of people go to varsity and the only thing they know how to do is cram papers, you know, smash smash those exams. But like when you put them in a real life situation, people genuinely cannot think. Right. That's or, that's a bit mean. Or oh no wait. No <laughs> no I, I still I no, I saying. still stand with what he's referring to is that like in the workplace it's not it's, it's not it's not module wait, you guys call it courts, but like we call it mod, it's not like module based, right? Like you like today we are not doing accounting or we are not doing science. Sure. We are doing life and making money. That's how the workplace is. The workplace sure. is we are making money. If you happen to encounter accounting, tech, within the project that you're doing, you need to make it work, right? And, <laughs> and you need to be able to think your way out of it, right? Um, and I think that's a very important thing, especially uh, given that everything is changing so much, right? So uh, I think you had mentioned something about like being a lifelong learner. That's absolutely important, right? And being able to skill yourself, reskill, learn something else, pivot into something else um, that is essentially become a survival skill. And I think the sooner you learn that, the better equipped you are to, I guess, survive and, and thrive in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like, like he said something about like, I don't think you can essentially go through life in the 20th century without constantly chopping and changing your skill. Right. Because, like, we've been through a year now of COVID-19. And so many people without a job who their jobs were relevant a year ago. And have a feeling that this is probably going to continue for the next two to three years. Mm. As companies um, and corporates figure out where they stand in terms of how the world has shifted, right? So, you can't afford, because something that someone like who, who was a high manager at some job, right? For the last ten years, and they and they would be good at it, but now they're not even needed, right? So now there's going to be things like blockchain, where even like transfer attorneys, the moment if that comes to, to be have to be like a transfer attorney, that might even be questionable. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So there's so many things that are going to come in place, but my fear is like how far, because let's assume technology in terms of blockchain and whatever it is like data science or AI, mm-hmm. like is allowed to be at its best, right? Because now you're going to find yourself with like 
this massive unemployment rate with whatever country. Like, can the government afford to allow that to happen? Because now, you go, now you're going to have great technology infrastructure within that specific country. However, you have people who can't eat. Yes, you guys um, are like modern and all that stuff, right? But in terms of mundane jobs, that would be majority of, for example, we live in South Africa, majority of the people do quote unquote mundane jobs that probably could be um, automated. automated, right? But then the reality of the situation is people got to eat and our education system isn't so far that everyone can get those skills and those skills also like another thing is you mentioned with black to go to university is quite an expensive experience yeah, mm. so it's not like we can be like like for example like say scandinavian countries where it's like just get an education you get there you can you could you could have the mindset or the skills to get an education but not have the financial means to get an education mm. so so then the question would be like at what like what is almost the the balancing act that the government and corporate would have to keep because I don't think that ever allow blockchain or AI to, to fully take its course because of that. Do you know what the problem is? Is that so us being in a capitalist society mm. I could say semi. Well, say for all well, the semi capitalist <laughs> society. Um it's the problem with I get where you're coming from. Problem is, is that I mean, you could say it's a problem in some circumstances, a problem, but in other circumstances, it's a good thing. The thing mm. with capital is that it gives people the freedom to make many decisions, or those who have access to capital. Anyway, I think one of the things that I find most interesting about capitalism, many people always complain about it, but to me, capitalism it's like a mirror of what your society actually thinks, because. It's pure. It's functions off of the principles of supply and demand. Mm. Uh, people are willing to pay for what they really value. You can tweet whatever you want, mm. <laughs> what that card or what your cash actually goes for. That's what you care about. Like I don't go spiritual, but it's like that um, Bible verse: "Your heart's where your treasure lies." That's very true. Yeah, and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. But it's like, it's it's okay. like there's that verse: "Your heart is where your treasure lies." And so a capitalist, it's like, for example, let's look at, and I'll, I'll get to bit, um, cryptocurrency and AI now. I just want to create context. Sure. Um, we look at, for example, this move towards ethical farming. Now, for a number of years, many people have been speaking about the effects of global warming. I don't even think it's ethical farming. I think it's just ethical corporate environments, like in general. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah but it's like, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm using the farming, for example, how food is sourced. Uh, and, you know, maybe they can speak about global warming and, you know, farming practices, how it harms the environment, how it harms certain animals as well. And I'm sure you've all noticed there's slowly been a move towards companies looking to implement that. And part of the reason why is that now because enough people care about it sure. and enough people are willing to pay a premium for ethically sourced products, companies have no choice but to start doing that. And in a way, that's just an example of how that mirror mm. has shown as society is moving towards trying to be more sustainable, companies are meant to follow suit. Because people speak with their money. Exactly. <laughs> people speak with their money. But now the problem is when it comes to, but that's, that's the good side. The other side of it is that it gives people freedom to buy into their worst impulses, and this time can often be greed. If we have five companies together, right? when it comes to artificial intelligence and um, blockchain technology, especially artificial intelligence in our case, and this will also throw in automating many, you could say, mundane jobs. Uh, the company that moves first, I know if I automate first, I immediately reduce the cost in my company. Sure. I boost my profits. If I'm listed, that can obviously affect my share prices as well. If I'm looking to list, that will increase my cash flows in my company. Mm -hmm. um, I can show great reports to potential investors and then I can exit nicely, get a young 500 mil or whatever. And then I go live the rest of my life in the Cayman Islands. The person who... <laughs> Talk about the, your dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the person who implements it first, in my opinion, has a big advantage over the others. Because if you implement it well, 
there's a high chance you're going to take a, you could take everyone else out of business if they choose not to follow suit anyway guys um thank you for listening um we'll tag our like if you guys have anything to say to us if we've got anything wrong we'll tag our social media platforms on the descriptions and um as daryl said like subscribe send to your ex send to the person that you wish achieve something in their lives and we thank you for listening we are the school fees um episode i'm tulani that guy over there i'm not sure if you'll be able to see him that's daryl and then this is Ludwe. and yeah bye everyone <laughs>